Welcome to Woodville on this beautiful Sunday morning. Why don't you stand your feet? Let's sing praise. Come on. I was nowhere. You came to my rescue. From the grave I've been raised. When I needed the Savior to save me, Jesus, you made a way. I was blind, but these eyes have been opened. Now I walk in the light. And every step on this road I will follow, Jesus, you made a way. You are the way. You are the way. truth, you're the life, you're my future, Jesus, you may. Come on, if you're alive, sing it out. I'm alive in the love that you give me, free to dance once again. You will lead me from glory to glory, Jesus, you made a way. You are Upon 
your shoulders You shattered the dark As you rose to life again You searched all the earth For those who were lost And leaving the rescue for the fallen You're leading us home As we call upon your name You're the God who saved
Church, can we worship him this morning? Thank you, Lord. God, we give you praise. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. That's so faithful. Why are you, Father? again, I will sing. And I will sing of all you've done. God. And I will remember how far you carried me from the beginning till the end. You are Father, you are faithful, Lord Jesus. Father, faithful are you, Lord. You never let us down, Lord God. Father, you never let us go. You sing your praise, God. Church, can we just take a couple moments here and in your own words, just thank him this morning. Thank you for his faithfulness. Thank him for his love, for his grace that he's extended to us. Come on, if he's done anything good in your life, just give him praise this morning, church. Come on. You can lift up your hands, lift up your voice. Father, we give you praise, Lord. You've been so faithful, God. Father, you've never let me down, Lord. You've never let me down, God. You're always there. Father, you always know what's right, God, what's good. Father, I sing your praise, Lord.
help you sing. There wasn't a day that you let me fall and all of my life. Your love has been true. the rushing wind would you breathe within my heart Heart. through the raging storm would you hold me in your arms Ah. sing it out I need you cause I need voice. I need your love. Come on. Time needs your love. Get rough, we'll still sing. Come on. And when the nights get rough, sing it out. I will still sing out your praise. I need you.
Church, come on, let's begin to reach out to him. Come on. Sing to you, Lord. Sing to you, Jesus. We want to be close. So close to you, Lord. Oh. I cry out to you, Father. Thank you, God. Church, I really believe that God wants to meet with some of us this morning. I feel like he wants to change, change us this morning. Let's just take a couple minutes and just sit in his presence. And just reach out to him, all right? Come on. Open your heart, get rid of the distractions in our lives, and just focus on him this morning. Come on. Sing that again from your heart. Tell them you're all.
we sing it out. You're all. You're all I want. Say, come on. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are Powerful lyrics. This morning we've been singing and declaring that God is a good God and that God sees all things, He knows all things, and that He has a plan in store for us that is good. And it, we've also been declaring that it is Him that brings us into those good things. God, draw me close. God, bring me closer. I just want to lead you in a prayer where we simply give God permission to do the very good things that he wants to do in us and through us. So let's agree together. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that you are here. We are so aware of your presence. We welcome you here. And God, I pray that uh, we would become so aware of your sovereignty and your doing when it comes to us growing closer to you. God, we pray that you would help us to love you more, that you would help us to discover all that you are. God, for many of us in this place, maybe we came weary, maybe we came overwhelmed, maybe we came broken, and today we ask you, we give you permission to draw us closer to you. God, I pray that in us going closer to you, that we would find hope, that we would find joy, that we would find purpose. God, we know that you are the giver of these things. We know that you are the one who provides. We know that you are the one who heals. And so, God, would you draw us close this morning, we ask. God, I pray that you be with us for the remainder of this time together. Lord, that you prepare us for the moment where we respond to your word. I pray for amazing things to take place here in this place this morning. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. How many people are ready for God's word? I said, how many people are ready for God's word? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to, before we come to God's Word, just share a little bit about next Sunday. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, and it is our intergenerational first Sunday of the month service. We baptize the water, have communion. We're going to be talking next Sunday about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and I am honestly believing that hundreds of boys and girls will be baptized in the Holy Spirit next Sunday. And I want you to be in prayer for that. We are just going to offer some teaching in a creative way. It's going to be a very, very unique service. You're not going to want to miss next Sunday. And uh, spread the word. We're just believing God to do some amazing things. Last Sunday, we began a two-part sermon series about God of the Valley. And if you weren't here last Sunday, long weekend, you were away, I would invite you and encourage you to make sure you pull it up on the church website, watch it, listen to it, download it. And uh, we just took 1 Kings chapter 20, God of the mountain, God of the valley, and we looked at four valleys in the scripture and how God wants to meet you and show up in your valley. Well, today we're going to conclude that that sermon, and we're going to look at just one valley. And so I want to invite you this morning to get out your sermon notes. They are on the back of your bulletin, or you can pull it up on your handheld device and turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 37. I want to talk to you today about a valley of renewal. I don't know about you, but there might be times in your life journey that you feel like you're living life on empty, and you feel dry on the inside. You feel spiritually drained. You feel spiritually empty. God wants to visit you in your dry season. He wants to show up in your dry season. He wants to give a fresh breath of life. In our first morning service, a wonderful lady in our church felt the Lord giving her a a prophetic word for this house. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit, and we want to make room for the gifts of the Spirit. She had no clue what I was preaching on, but she simply confirmed that God wants to give a fresh breath of life in this place. If we want to have a life in the Spirit, we need a fresh breath of God's life. How many people believe God wants to give fresh life in our hearts, our life, our family, our church, our city, and our nation? 
In Ezekiel chapter 37, it's that great story about this prophet, this priest named Ezekiel. And God put his hand upon Ezekiel. He placed him in the middle of a valley. We often call it the valley of dry bones. And God used him in a great way. And so I want to talk to you this morning about one word, renewal. Would you say that word with me this morning, renewal? One, two, three. Renewal. God wants to renew you. God wants to revitalize you. God wants to refresh you. God wants to just bring that freshness of his spirit. And so I want to offer to us today four principles, four lessons, four truths, four steps to renewal in life's valleys. The first thing I want you to write in your notes, number one, is that renewal comes through taking spiritual inventory. Renewal comes from taking spiritual inventory. I was 16 years old, and uh, I had my first big official job. I worked for my mom's uncle in a paint store, but then I started to work in an A&P grocery store all the way through high school, and we had to take inventory. And we did it the old way, where my, my boss would send me down an aisle and say, Mark, count all the cans of soup. How many, how many Campbell's tomato soup do we have? How many chicken noodle soup do we have? And we'd all take a section of the store, and we'd take inventory to know where we were at. Now, let me word it differently. Can you imagine somebody called you up this morning and said, Hey, I want to go to your church this morning, Woodville, but I need directions. And you said to them, Well, where do you live? And they said, I don't know. You can't help someone get here if you don't know where they are at. Taking inventory spiritually in our life, in order for us to go where God wants to take us, we must understand clearly where we are at right now. To get to where God wants to take us, we must understand where we are at right now. So let's look at verse 1 and verse 2 of Ezekiel chapter 37. And let's start with verse 1. The hand of the Lord was on me. How many people would agree it's great to have God's hand on your life? Amen? It's great to have God's hand on your life. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and he set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. God put his hand upon Ezekiel, and he placed Ezekiel by his Spirit in the middle of this valley. This, this valley that was full of bones. I want you to look at verse number 2. Because in verse number 2, Ezekiel started to take inventory. Inventory of this valley of bones. Look at verse 2. He led me back and forth among them. God's spirit led him back and forth. I want you to picture Ezekiel walking through this valley. And he's inspecting the valley, and he's taking inventory. Notice what he saw. I saw great many bones. Not just bones, not just many bones, but great many bones. And then he went on to describe the condition of these bones. They're on the floor of the valley, and they were bones that were very dry. There was great bones, many bones, bones that were very dry. They'd been there for a long, long time. They were dry, and there was many of them. That was the condition. Now, we learn in another verse in Ezekiel chapter 37 that these dry bones represent the people of Israel. And so when Ezekiel took inventory, he saw great many bones, lots of bones in the valley, on the floor, and they were dry, And they've been dry and dead, and they've been there for a long, long time. Now, I want to ask you this morning some probing questions. And I want you to answer these questions in your heart, because I want us to take a spiritual inventory of our life this morning. Because sometimes, if we're honest, we don't think we are spiritually dry until we take a real honest look. So number one. Why did you come to church this morning? Was it duty? Was it obligation? Or was it desire? Do you really want to be here this morning? Or did you show up out of obligation? That that could be an indicator of your spiritual condition. Number two, do you find it easier to criticize or to compliment? 
that can be an indicator of your spiritual condition. Let me ask another question. When, when was the last time that you clearly felt that you heard the voice of God in your life? That you sense God speaking to you through his word, through a sermon, through a song, maybe something you watch, maybe in your devotional life, but, but you clearly heard and sense the voice of God. Let me ask you another question, and here it is. When's the last time that you really felt the divine, sovereign presence of God? Here's my concern, Woodville. Sometimes, if we're honest, we can confuse atmosphere with presence. We can show up to church, and the song is our preference, and it's lively, and it's good, and Pastor Brad is on his game, and the, the instruments are playing great, and we love atmosphere. But atmosphere must never be confused with the presence of God. You can sense the presence of God at any moment, at any time, without instruments, without song, or with great song. You can sense the presence of God anywhere, anytime. And it's just a question, when's the last time you felt the presence of God? Let me ask you another question. How's your joy level? Are you, are you overflowing with joy? Or are you struggling in that area? How is the, the love of God level in your life? How, what level are you at with the different fruit of the Spirit from the book of Galatians? What level are you at? When you walk out of this building and you go back into your neighborhood, you go back to work, you go back to school, you see people in the city of Ottawa, when's the last time that you actually wept over the people of our city who don't know Jesus Christ? I'm asking you some heart-searching questions. Because sometimes we think we don't need a message on spiritual dryness. And we think everything is okay. And my invitation this morning is for me as your pastor, and for our pastoral team, and for our church board, and for everyone in this auditorium to take an honest spiritual inventory of our life. And there's a great verse that came to my mind that I, I put in your notes, and you'll see it on the screen from Psalm chapter 139, verse 23 and verse 24. It's a prayer of, the, of David, the psalmist. He said, search me, God. Know my heart. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Now let's go back to our text. God's hand came upon Ezekiel. And when God's hand comes upon you, you begin to take an honest look. And he placed him by his spirit in the middle of a valley. And, and when, when Ezekiel began to walk back and forth, and, and the Hebrew wording here means he kept walking back and forth, back and forth. And as he began to inspect the valley, he discovered that there were great many bones, and the bones were very dry. And so the first principle of renewal is we must, number one, take a spiritual inventory. We must closely look at every area of our life and say, Holy Spirit, show me where I'm at now. Because in order to go and be what God wants you to be and go where God wants to take you spiritually, you must understand where you are at right now. And there's number two. Renewal comes, number two, through hope. I want you to say that word with me, hope. One, two, three. I didn't say it. You said it. i got to say it with you now. You ready? One, two, three. Hope. Come on, say it again. One, two, three. Hope. You see, God was looking for a person who had his perspective. And he chose Ezekiel. And, and renewal comes through hope. Look at verse 3. I mean, he's walking through the valley. He had just done his inventory, his inspection. And then in verse number three, God asked Ezekiel one question. He asked me, son of man, he called him son of man, can these bones live? Now, there's many bones, great many bones. They were dry and they were dead. And they've been like that for a long time. And God was looking for a person who didn't see the problem, but saw the possibility. God was looking for a person 
who would be filled with hope. And there's some of you sitting here today, right now, you're feeling so dead and dry in an area of your life, and you've lost hope. Here's what I sense God wants to do. God wants to renew your hope in this place today. I said God wants to renew your hope in this place today. He wants to fill you with hope. So the question was, son of man, can these bones live? Now look at the response of Ezekiel. I I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Number one, he called him sovereign. How many people know that God is sovereign? I said, how many people know God is sovereign? And then he said, you alone, meaning only you, God, can make the difference. He said, you alone know. You know what Ezekiel was doing? Ezekiel was deferring the problem of the great many dry bones to a God who is sovereign. When you don't know what to do, and you feel like your back is up against a wall, and you feel like you're living life on empty, defer to God because he can make the difference. Come on, give a clap offering of praise to the Lord God. Now, that was the perspective of Ezekiel. But let's come down now to the perspective of the people of Israel. I want you to look now at verse 11. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. The bones were the people of Israel. Now look at the perspective of the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone, and we are cut off. I mean, the general consensus of the people of Israel is this. Our bones are dried up. We're finished. We're dried up. Our hope is gone. You see, when you're dry, your hope can be gone. And then they went so far to say, we are cut off. And God was looking for one person who had a different perspective. And he placed Ezekiel amongst the dry bones. And he said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Because the people of Israel said, we're dried up. Our hope is gone. We're cut off. And Ezekiel said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. The answer, God, is in you. And so this morning, I believe the Lord wants to renew our hope. Just because we might feel spiritually dry. Just because we may not have felt the presence of God in a long time. Or we may not have heard God's clear voice in a long time. Or we may not feel the burden for the loss like we used to. We may feel like we're here out of obligation. I want to declare in this place, God wants to renew your hope in this place today. I want to give you a few more verses before we move to point number three. Hosea chapter 2, verse 15. I mean, Hosea is referring back to this valley of Achor. Achor means trouble. And he said, therefore, there I will give her back her vineyards, and I will make the valley of Achor, which means trouble, the valley of trouble, a door of hope. How many people believe God can take your trouble and he can give you hope and he can make a difference in your trouble? How many people are glad that God can do that? And then there's Romans chapter 15, verse 13. I I honestly pray this prayer often for you. I honestly do. Here it is. May the God of hope, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hope comes from God because he's the God of hope. How many people are glad that we can have hope in God, amen? We can have hope in God. Once you begin to hope, you can begin to hear. I want to take you to number three. Number three, renewal comes through hearing The word of the Lord. Renewal comes through listening 
to the word of the Lord. When I was in school, they taught me to read, they taught me to write, and they taught me to speak, but they didn't teach me to listen. We don't have many courses on how to listen. But get ready for this. The average person will spend 45% of their day listening. 45% of your day listening. Now get ready for this. The average person speaks about 125 words per minute. Now sometimes I'm a little less. When I get real excited, I'm a little more. But the average person speaks 125 words a minute. But the average person has the capability to listen to 400 words per minute. That means three quarters of the time you zone out. Now, I don't have a lot of notes when I preach. I've got it all memorized. I like watching you people because I know some of you aren't listening right now. I've seen some of you already lift your head. You're counting one, two, three, there's five lights, and oh, that light over there is out. And we wander. Our mind wanders. Church, God wants to speak. Now hear me. Here it is. The problem isn't that God isn't speaking. I have people all the time say, oh, Pastor, God is not speaking. Guess what? He is speaking all the time. The problem isn't he's not speaking. The problem is we're not listening. we got to learn to listen. Because renewal comes through hearing the word of the Lord. I've been praying that God would give us a peaceful mind. That we could tune into the voice of the Spirit. That God would speak to us. Let's go to our text. Look at verse 4 and verse 5. Verse number 4. Then he said to me, God said to Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Yeah, I want you to just picture that. Ezekiel's in a valley and all he sees is bones and they're dead and they're dry. God is asking Ezekiel to preach to a very dead audience. I'm glad I don't preach to a dead audience here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But I tell you, over the years, I've been in certain places where I thought, my, 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 my. Ezekiel is preaching to a dead audience. And God said to him, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, i got to say this. The most important voice in this room right now is not my voice, and it's not your voice. It's the voice of the Lord. I said the most important voice in this room is not my voice, it's not your voice, it's the voice of the Lord. And God is speaking, and we've got to line up our problem under the word of God. And God said to Ezekiel, you prophesy to these dead bones, and you say to these, dread, these dead bones, you say to them, you say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Look at verse 5. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these, says to these bones, I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. Now, just a question. I honestly love asking questions that I already know the answer to because I want you to get the answer to the question in your spirit. How many people believe if God says it, it's true? Do you believe that? That's all five of you. How many people believe if God says it, it's true? Come on, how many people believe if God says it, it's true? Do you believe it? Therefore, line up your problem, your difficulty, and your dilemma under the word of God. And so Ezekiel was preaching and prophesying to these dry bones. And God said to him, this is what you're supposed to say. I'll make breath into you and you will come to life. So look at verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. So Ezekiel began to preach as he was commanded 
And as he was prophesying, not after, but as he was prophesying, he's just speaking God's word over the dead bones. How many people know that when you speak the word, something begins to happen? And he's just prophesying the word over these dead bones. There was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. The ankle bone connected to the leg bone. The leg bone connected to the hip bone. I probably don't have all the words right, but I think you know the song. Bone to bone, tendons and flesh. God gave a word. And something was released. I want to show you a very sad passage of Scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 3, where there was this priest named Eli and a boy named Samuel. It says the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. And in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. And there weren't many visions. And so one night, Eli, whose eyes had become so weak that he could barely see, he was lying down in his usual place, but the lamp of God had not yet gone out. Oh, what a tragic story. I believe God is speaking, and he's calling us to listen. In the book of Revelation, you read about the seven churches. I preached a series not long ago about the seven churches in Revelation. And at the end of each of those letters is this verse. It's over and over again. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And so I want to declare in this place another step in renewal is hearing and listening to the voice of God. He is speaking. He is calling us to listen. Number one, we take spiritual inventory. Number two, it comes through hope. And number three, it comes through hearing the word of the Lord. And then there's number four. It comes through the Holy Spirit. And I want to declare these verses to you today. Verse 9 and verse 10. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. And say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, breath. Would you say those two words with me? Come, breath. One, two, three. Come, breath. Did you know that the Hebrew word for breath is ruach? Did you know that the Greek word in the New Testament for breath is pneuma? Ruach in the Hebrew, pneuma in the Greek. It can be translated breath, it could be translated wind. But it can also be translated spirit. So when Ezekiel was prophesying over these bodies, he was saying, come, spirit. Now, now, the first thing that happened was bone connected to bone. Tendons came on, flesh surrounded them. He was in a valley that was filled with bones that were dead and dry. And they'd been that way for a long time. But now he was looking at a valley that was filled with lifeless people. They looked like life on the outside, but they were dead 
on the inside. Now, church, let me be honest. Sometimes we can walk into church with our Pentecostal smile, and we can look good on the outside, but on the inside, we're dry and we're empty. We got our hands up and we're singing, but we're feeling so burned out. We're feeling so desperate. We're feeling so lonely. We're feeling so lost in the busyness of life, and we're feeling like, like, like I can't get through another day. And I, I just feel the Lord saying to me, there's some of you sitting here today. It's not I can't get through another day. I'm not sure I can get through another five minutes. Ezekiel said, come, breath, come, wind, come, spirit. Now look at the latter part of verse 9. Come, breath, from the four winds, from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. And that's speaking of the omnipresence of the Spirit. Here's the deal, folks. Sometimes we think that God's Spirit can only move at a youth convention in Oshawa with 900 young people. Or God's Spirit can only move in some other church, in some other country, in some other setting. But how many people believe that the Spirit of God can move right here in this auditorium, in my life and in your life, right here and right now. So, so don't miss it. When Ezekiel was prophesying to the wind, it was a prophecy of invitation. Come, Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes where he is invited. The Spirit of God shows up where he is welcomed. The Spirit of God is a gentleman, and he's just looking for me and you and a people to say, Come, Spirit of God. Come, Ruach. Come, Numa. Come, wind of the Spirit. Ezekiel was standing in a valley of dry bones, and the valley is very dry, and there's a great many bones. And he spoke the word over them. And bone connected to bone. And tendons and flesh. They looked like life on the outside. But they were dead on the inside. And so he said, come breath from the four winds. And breathe into these slain that they may live. Look at verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath entered them. And they came to life. And they stood on their feet. A vast army. I've got a word for you this morning when you invite Holy Spirit Holy Spirit shows up and the Holy Spirit brings life to our dead areas he brings joy where there's not joy he brings hope where there's not hope because the Spirit is the Spirit of life somebody give a clap offering of praise to the Lord God Almighty I want the worship band and the worship team to come and I want to invite you to stand to your feet. And I want to be very transparent with you. It was in the mid-1990s. As Evelyn and I were pastoring. At a great church. Just like this church, outside of the city of Toronto. And to be honest, we were in a sovereign move of God. People were getting saved every Sunday. The power of the Holy Spirit was moving. It was during that time that we faced some challenges in the life of the church. Because when God shows up, the enemy tries to destroy. And I was getting so discouraged. To be very honest, there were some Sundays I'd get up and I'd preach. But all I wanted to do was give my letter of resignation. And I'd preach. God would show up. Evelyn gets diagnosed with cancer. The kids were young. And I was in a church... I was experiencing a move of God. But I felt so dry on the inside. I felt so empty. I felt so discouraged. And I'll never forget the times I would just get alone in my office. And I'd fall on my face. 
And I just say, breathe on me, oh breath of God. God, I just need a fresh breath of you in my spirit. I want to say to you, when I prayed those prayers, the Holy Spirit showed up. And the Spirit of God got me back on my feet. And the Spirit of God rejuvenated me. I'll tell you where I'm at right now. I can't even put it in words. And I may not do well in how I say this. But I know that 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 God has placed Evelyn and I in this church, in this city for such a time as this. And we are feeling so energized. We are feeling so lifted in spirit. There's an excitement in our spirits. But I have sensed for some time God saying to me that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. And I feel that the Spirit of the Lord has been saying to me lately, call the church to take spiritual inventory. Just get honest. Just get real. Just get transparent. And I felt the Lord say to me then as we open our hearts and we say, come, Spirit, Come, breath of God, that he's going to breathe life like we've not experienced in a long time. And here's what I felt the Lord say to me, that what he wants to do in this church is not just for this church alone. I feel the Lord saying that he's going to send a mighty move of God in the city of Ottawa. And there's going to be a revival that's going to move from the nation's capital. And it's going to move across the province of Ontario and across the nation of Canada. My Bible says that he shall have dominion from sea to sea. And I declare that Jesus shall have dominion from sea to sea in the nation of Canada. I love you, church. I love the city. And I love this nation. But I'm not content to stay where I'm at at the expense of receiving what God wants to do. As full as I feel filled right now, I'm praying as they prayed in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, but keep on being filled with the Spirit. What your pastor is saying, oh Jesus, send a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. And Ezekiel was standing in a valley and was dry and dead. And then bones connected and flesh came on. And then he said, come. Come breath. Come breath. Come breath. And the breath of God, the Ruach of God, began to breathe. And these dead bodies stood up as a vast army. Here's what I feel the Lord saying, that he wants to breathe, 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 breathe on every son, on every daughter, on every man, on every woman, on every grandma, on every grandpa, on every young person, on every young adult, on every adult. He wants to breathe a fresh outpouring of his Holy Spirit. And yea, we shall rise up as a vast army of God, and greater things shall happen through us in the name of the Lord. That we're going to see a mighty move of revival in the city of Ottawa, in the province of Ontario, and in the nation of Canada, I say, breathe on me, O oh, breath of God. Breathe on me, O oh, breath of God. I'm not playing games this morning. I'm not, I'm not trying to stir you. I'm not trying to stir something up this morning. I'm not trying to conjure something up in the flesh. I'm not, I'm not praying that we work something up. I'm praying today that God would pour something down of his Holy Spirit in this place. And here's what I believe the Lord has asked me to ask you this morning. 
Are you thirsty for a move of God? Are you hungry for more of Him? Do you want the fresh wind of His Spirit to come and refresh you and rejuvenate you? And to bring life to any and every dead area that's inside of you that you may not realize is there. You just want all that He has. If that's you this morning. I'm not going to beg you. But I'm going to ask you right now to leave where you're standing. Right now. And flood this altar. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't wait. The Spirit of God is in the house this morning. Come, Spirit. Come, Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come on, Woodville. Lift your hands. Just pray it right now. Come, Spirit. Come on, say it. Come, Spirit. Come on, Spirit. Come, Spirit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lift your voice. Invite Him. Invite Him. Invite Him. There's, there's, there's scores of you right now. If you're honest, you're feeling so dry and so weary. God, I felt the Lord say to me in first service, he's going to give a baptism of joy in this place. Come on, if you're at the altar, get real close. There's many more that want to come. Come on, come on, get real close, real close. Press in, press in. Lift your hands, lift your voice. Lift your hands, lift your voice. Come on, pastor, lead us in the song. This is our invitation. Like the rushing wind, would you breathe within my heart? Heart. Through the raging storm, would you hold me in your arms? Because I need you. How I need you. Cause I need your love like I need water. Just lift your hands. Just begin to call out to the Lord. As Brad leads us in this song again, don't, don't sing a song. Pray a song. Sing it in prayer. We're, we're asking Him. We're asking Him for the mighty rushing wind. We're asking for the fresh breath of God to breathe life into our spirit and into our soul. So come on, Whitville, from front to back, from side to side, way up on the balcony. Just lift your hands, lift your voice. Let's, let's sing it to the Lord again. Would you breathe within my heart? heart. And through the raging storm, would you hold me in your eyes? Because I need you. I need you Closer than my every breath. 
I ask you just to lift your hands all across this place as high as you can as a symbol of surrender. And as your pastor, as your shepherd, I want to pray right now with you that there would be a fresh outpouring of Holy Spirit over you right now. So God, we invite you, come Holy Spirit. God, we don't want to work something up. We just want to open our hearts to experience a fresh outpouring of your spirit. We don't want to confuse atmosphere for presence. We just want to experience a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit. So God, as the shepherd of Woodville, I say with my friends this morning, come Holy Spirit and breathe life in this place this morning. Breathe life on every man, every woman, every situation. I pray that out of our belly would flow rivers of living water this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. God, I pray that you would send a spirit of renewal, a spirit of refreshment, a spirit of revitalization. I pray in the name of the Lord that you would take any dead area in our life and you would bring it to life right now. So come, Spirit. Come, Spirit, right now, we ask you, we invite you, we invite you, we invite you, we invite you. Come on, lift your voice all across this place. If you want to say, come, Holy Spirit, go ahead and do that. Come, Spirit, come, Spirit of God, come, Spirit of God, we need you. We so need you. We so need you, Lord. 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 Oh, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need breath inside of my lungs, burning my heart just like a fire. Come and take me over, Jesus. Draw me closer
I'm going to ask if everyone's head would be bowed. Just a few moments, this service is going to come to a close. As our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I don't want to make any presumption that everyone standing in this place today is ready for heaven. And my one question to you from front to back, from side to side, up on the risers, and for those that are standing at the front is this. If today was the day that you stepped into eternity, are you positive? that you're ready for heaven. Was there a time, was there a place, a moment that you personally asked Jesus Christ to come into your life? I'm not asking you to go to church. I'm not asking you, did you give in the offering? I'm not asking you, are you a good person? Salvation is by grace, God's grace. The way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he's the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. The Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says that it, it's a gift. It's grace. We can't buy it. You can't earn it. You can't work for it. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. And if you can't honestly say that I'm ready for heaven, but, but you want to be ready, and you want to be led in a prayer that Jesus would be the center of your life and the Lord of your life, and you want Jesus to, to be in your heart, you want to be led in a prayer of salvation. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If that's you, I, I want you to lift your hand high so I could see it. I'm, I'm going to lead you in a prayer in a moment. You're not ready for heaven, but you want to be ready, and you want to be led in this prayer. I want you right now just to lift your hand high as you can, and by lifting your hand high, you're letting me know, Pastor, I, I want to pray this prayer. I want to pray this prayer. Hands are going up all across this place. I want, to, I want to pray this prayer. Anyone else? I want to pray this prayer. I want Jesus to be the center of my life. Yeah, yeah. Many hands. I want to lead those of you who lifted your hands in a prayer, and we're going to join you as you pray. So let's pray together. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, ask I ask you into my life. Please forgive me of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. I invite you to be the center of my life. I have, decided I have decided to follow Jesus. To follow Jesus. I make my peace with you. I, my peace with I pray this now, pray this now. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Amen. Open your eyes and give one loud clap offering of praise for, for salvation. Salvation. If you prayed that prayer, you prayed the best prayer. You made the best decision. In a couple of moments on your way out, drop by the follow wall. We got some friendly people there. We want to give you a Bible if you don't own a Bible. We got a little booklet we want to give you to help you in your new faith. If you know people that are checking out Christianity, invite them to Alpha. They can tell you more about that. Drop by the Connect wall, friends. Get into a Connect group. Go to the Serve wall. We'll help you find a place of serving. And if this is your church, if you're a first-time guest today, we're glad you came. And I hope you drop by the guest lounge. We want to bless you. And, and friends, I want you to look this way. I don't want you to miss this before we close. If you can be here tonight from 6 to 7, come. Prayer makes the difference. Come as a family. We want this to be intergenerational prayer. Be in prayer for next Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday. And make sure you get that stuff for the big give. And take that invitation and bring someone. Bring a family next weekend. And we just want to do all we can to reach this city. So we're going to close. And after I pray... Pastor Brad's going to keep playing for a little bit, and this altar is going to remain open. You don't have to rush out, and there's a team of altar workers that'll be glad to just pray with you. But Jesus, I, I, I thank you for this amazing church. We're hungry, we're thirsty for more of you. And we just pray, God, that you would just breathe life into every area of our life. In this church, in this city, in this region, in this nation. And God, I pray next Sunday on Pentecost Sunday, God, I, I'm so, I've, been, I've been dreaming about that service for a long time. I believe in a very unique way, God, we're, we're going to see something happen. And we just open our hearts. We pray that there be hundreds of people baptized in the Holy Spirit next Sunday. I thank you, God, for this amazing church. We pray for beautiful weather next Saturday for the big gift. 
We pray for a great prayer gathering tonight. Go with these amazing people. Come, Holy Spirit. We need you. I pray that we'd hear your voice. We would sense your presence. We would walk in the Spirit. I pray it now in Jesus' name. Together we said. I said together we said. Amen. Amen. If you need to go, go with God's grace, God's blessing. If you want to stay and worship, stay at the altar, you're welcome to.